Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Adoption Engagement Forum on 11th of November 2022. Um, as you're all hopefully aware, this meeting will be recorded and published uh, to the Open Active YouTube channel. So um, if you have any concerns about that, then please uh, either let me know or yeah, feel free to leave the meeting. Um, just to quickly go through what we've got on the agenda today, although I think this might be have to be revised a little bit. Um, that uh, we'll just have a quick introductions just for the sake of the recording and then we're going to review the terms of reference document which was shared um just over a week ago and that we we sort of briefly went through um in the course of the last last uh, adoption engagement forum meeting a couple of weeks ago um we were due to have a spotting with update from um adam freeman pask but unfortunately he's been unwell this week so i don't think he's going to be able to join us so might have to um leave that update for for another meeting another time and then howard um ask you from the odi has joined us to give a quick update on open active um, marketplace um, which should be good and then there'll be a chance to raise any other business towards towards the end of the agenda um, but just for the sake of the recording, if we could just quickly go around and have a quick round of in introductions and um, doesn't have to be anything, anything crazy, just a kind of name and organisation, that'd be good. Um, if I could start with you, Jack. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, I'm Jack Lord. I'm a director at Open Data Services, uh, working with Sport England uh, to provide technical advice on Open Active. Great. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Howard. I would ask you, data technologist and technical lead for the ODI on the work supported in Open Active. Thanks, Howard. Kanika? I'm Kanika Joshi. I work as the impact manager with the ODI, and I'm particularly engaged with the phase five of the Open Active uh, work to monitor the MEL for the project. Great. Thanks, uh, Tom. Hi, everyone. Uh, Tom Marley from Played. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Chris? Hi, all. Uh, Chris from the ODI, uh, Data Management Requirements Specialist working on Open Active. Thanks, Chris. And last but no means least, uh, Nick, please. Hello, Nick from Iman. Great. Thanks, Nick. OK, so just to lead into the first um, item on the agenda. Oh, sorry. Now I was just going to give a quick uh, reminder and updates. Um, I think everyone here will be aware, but um, just in case anyone's watching the recording, if you're not already in there, please join our Slack workspace, um, which is openactive.slack.com. That's the best place to keep up to date with everything going on across the initiative um, and uh, around the adoption engagement forum to, to receive any updates and um, links and things like that. So please join us there. Um, and uh, there's a couple of links in the slides. Um, I can, if you join the Slack group, you'll you'll find the link to the, to all of these things. Um, but if you've got any questions or, or want to find out any more, then please contact us at hello at openactive.io. Sorry, uh, Tim. So a quick quick uh, correction on that slide. It should be uh, slack.openactive.io rather than openactive.slack.com. Oh, really? oh, I tried that link in it, and that was the link that came up. So. Yeah, if you go to openactive.slack.com, you can't sign up unless you um, already have an account. Um, sorry, unless you're one of the named domains, whereas slack.openactive.io, anyone can sign up. Okay, confusing. So slack.openactive.io. Okay, That's I, will, it. Yeah. I will correct that on the slide. Thank you, Thank you Nick, for that clarification. It's all right. Okay, so just moving on to the terms of reference and just to give a bit of context, I think everyone else was here last week, but Jack um, wasn't. So uh, this has sort of come out of the beginning of phase five um, of Open Active, which will be running until December 2023. There's been a kind of realisation that we need to better define the different groups um, and the governance structure within the initiative and um, try and make it uh, clearer what each of the different what role each of the different groups plays and how the organizations that are engaging with those different groups are influencing the initiative as a whole um, and how those uh, different groups um, interact with each other and influence each other um, and a lot of those conversations have been going on with the steering committee and are ongoing with the steering committee and the next steering committee meeting is due to take place a week today, um, Friday the 18th of November. Um, and 
Uh, as part of this work, we've uh, drafted a kind of terms of reference document for this group to try and make it clearer for any new organisations who are wanting to get involved, um, but also for the organisations who have been involved in the past, um, the kind of purpose of this group and how, as I say, how it relates to the other groups and, and influences those. Um, and a couple of things wanted to just revisit today. We we spoke about this um, a fair bit last time, so, um, but uh, hopefully now everyone's had a chance to look into the terms of reference and the objectives and, and kind of consider that, take some time to consider them a bit um, to any uh, feedback or any comments that have come out of, of that reflection period. Um, also wanted to discuss the cadence of the meetings. They have been running fortnightly but um, we're potentially um, proposing that they should switch to being monthly meetings rather than fortnightly, um, just to uh, ease, ease the kind of burden of, of the capacity on us um, in terms of the secretariat, um, but also to make sure that it's not too much of a burden on um, new members uh, joining and uh, organizations having to give up, give up the time from, from their day jobs. Um, and as I say, just have a look at the how we relate to the other open active groups as well, particularly the steering committee and the W3C community group, which looks at the standards and, and how these groups interact with each other um, and any reporting mechanisms or processes that, um, that might come out of that. So that's the kind of context, context for the discussion today. Um, I think, Nick, you've um, added a few comments to the document. Um, thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you wanted to use that as a, a starting point or if, if anyone else had any comments or anything they wanted to, to start with. Yeah, happy to, to do that if, if uh, no, someone else has got anything to start with. It looks like, oh, is Howard about to say? Yeah, just uh, could you copy that link into the chat, um, Tim, please? Just yes, uh, sure, I can do. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Nick, yeah, no, 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 no worries. That's, that's, that sounds good. Um, happy to do that. So, uh, yeah, so I guess going through from the, um, oh, yeah, I'll follow your screen, that's easier. Um, going through from the top uh, of the dock, then. Um, I think one of the things that uh, I think maybe is a, a framing thing, and it'd be really interesting, uh, especially to to hear Jack's thoughts on this, actually, because I think you might be new to this uh, part of the conversation, whereas I think others in the room might have been uh, present in some form of this conversation before. Um, so uh, there's a, a question about um, what is this forum and and like, how does it how does it work? And one of the things that we've spoken about before is this idea that this forum should really be a kind of a place where the different organizations in open active that are engaged. So um, every organization that is really engaged in open active has open active as almost like a work stream within their organization. So, you know, there's, there's a, a kind of a bit of work that's going on constantly within their organization relating to open active, whatever that looks like. Um, so those represented on the call today, actually every organization on this call has an open active work stream. Others who usually join this call also have open active work streams. Um, and so uh, it's a, a kind of a framing thing where previously we might have thought about this call as something where we all kind of shout at, not shout at, request the ODI to do different things and the ODI doesn't necessarily do them. Uh, but, and that's because the ODI hasn't got capacity to uh, to do them and and also isn't well best place to do them I think that's something that we've kind of we've kind of learned here so um, rather than everyone saying oh we need to get this organization involved and then you know um, Tim and for example ending up with a massive shopping list at the end of the call being like how on earth do I do all of this uh, and then and then it not happening which is what we've seen in the past um, the, the kind of reframing of this is actually a collaboration space for all the various organizations who have open active work streams to come and bring their work into the open and share and, and get some opportunities to, to collaborate on those work streams, which includes the ODI, of course, um, but rather than the success or failure of the initiative being solely on whether the ODI can engage or not various people, 
um, as the framing, which I don't think was accurate because I think we were always doing separate work, open active work streams. It's just that this forum seemed to be, for whatever reason, focused on what the ODI was doing, um, is more accurately to represent what's actually happening, which is we've always all done engagement. We've been part of this initiative, uh, you know, all of all of the organizations engaged in this have been doing that. So, and then, and then, so that's the first bit. What's the point of the forum? And then the second bit, which kind of hopefully leads on from that is, how do we use this forum to engage more people? And for me, the answer here is not just invite everyone to the Zoom meeting, because that's not necessarily going to result in lots of people opening up their data, um, but rather, um, so that's why the forum itself is not the thing that gets the stuff to happen. Um, it is the people on the Zoom meeting that have engagement work streams that are proactively engaging or collaborate on whether the tools are, you know, whether the documentation is right, whether the, you know, the messaging is good, whether we can share some marketing efforts, whether sporting can boost any of the work we're doing in, with, with overall marketing, you know. So it's, it's really a space to collaborate between uh, the different organizations to look for synergies, to share what we're doing in the open. Um, and what that hopefully means um, to be uh, candid is that it's worth people's time turning up because there's a reason to turn up because you're going to receive some benefit back. You know, the other organizations might be able to help the work stream you're working on. You can see that you're influencing some other work streams for other organizations. And therefore um, the whole, the whole thing feels like it's, it's moving forward, um, which I think is in a stark contrast to maybe where we've previously been, which is just kind of kind of more dull status updates. And, you know, have we had this conversation yet type thing, which, you know, doesn't really, um, it doesn't really inspire anybody and that's why we've we've seen a, a drop off in in attendance um and certainly you know with our with our, our internal team it's difficult to justify our attendance to this call um other than we obviously believe in the initiative overall because um we've got open active work streams doing engagement very successfully and we kind of see that as a great thing to crack on with and this call doesn't add to that so it's like we'll just carry on um so um for me the metric of success here is um Obviously, my colleague Nish has, has joined the call uh, post intros. Um, if Nish feels like it's valuable to turn up to this call and his team that does, does engagement feels it's valuable, um, that's my own measure for whether we're success, successful here in, in what we're doing because um, I, an organization like ours really should want to turn up. I mean, we're so involved. Um, we do so much engagement, right? We should have a, we should see the value in that. Um, and uh, and it shouldn't just be a case of oh well it's just you know we're just calling a roll call every week of all the stuff that is is kind of not happened yet. Um, so hence, and bringing it back to this document, and and you know with that framing in mind, I feel like we should be very action oriented around what's happening in this meeting. Who is specifically doing it? Is it the members? Is it the chair? You know what when we expect stuff to happen, who is that expectation on? So I don't like the language of the forum doing things because for me, that's just a nonsense. You know, the forum doesn't do anything. People turning up on a Zoom call, you know, who might never have attended before doesn't necessarily translate into anything. Uh, the question for me is, what is our objective here that we're trying to achieve? And then, and how do we collaborate to achieve that thing? And this forum is part of that collaboration, but it isn't the only part of that collaboration. So I don't know if that's a, and I'd love to. I'd love to hear specifically Jack's thoughts on everything I've just said because I know you've got a huge, wide view on how this works across different different sectors. So, great, thanks, Nick. Yeah, do you want to come in, Jack? Yeah, I I think Nick, I agree with pretty much everything you've said there. Um, the key challenge is around that objective of making it worthwhile for people to turn up, and I think um, where I would possibly add to what you were saying is that this forum should be kind of a key like sense making forum for people to understand what is and isn't working with open active and there should be a clear line that translates what we hear in meetings like this into action in the initiative itself so i think that the underlying challenge is with a data standard and a data standard initiative is it's always a coordination problem but at the same time, you're reliant on kind of action in the initiative itself to make things happen, to remove blockers, to improve quality, et cetera. And I think what I would like to see is you mentioned at the end, towards the end there, like clear practical actions coming out that should include 
a sense that if you turn up to a meeting like this, you have a chance to change the direction or sharpen the focus of the initiative itself to direct work, et cetera, or not, not to direct work, but to ensure that the right decisions and prioritization is happening uh, with the ODI and with, the, with Open Active, uh, with Sport England's priorities. And I think that's the key bit that, that moves us on from this being a roll call to being something that is absolutely central to increasing adoption of Open Active overall and making the initiative a success. Love that, Jack. Um, and to um, to just point out that there's a place further down the document we may get to later, which explicitly rules out the ODI being influenced by anything discussed here. <laughs> so it'd be great to talk about your comment there in respect to that, which I, I, I totally see the merits of, uh, you know, what you're, what you're saying there. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, Nick and Jack. Tom, did you have any thoughts? I think I think this is all sensible. Like um, I, I did initially looked at the original document and and thought it made sense. My feedback was I actually had written some a comment which I'll re-add, but um, I don't know. I didn't see it on the document, so I must not have posted it properly. But it was just around whatever the objectives. I think the objectives are on the right line and, and the way that it's been updated and rethought about is it, it makes it a lot clearer. Um, it's just a bit of specificity and, and I think discussing it'd be a, a good place where we could come and um, report on, okay, we've say engaged two more publishers since the last call and these are the publishers and um, I'm in, we're able to do that because of the work they're doing and uh, that's more of a kind of sharing and uh, and collaborating type of thing but yeah it's it's around like there's good objectives but then what are the measurable kind of outcomes of those or what are the measurable results that we can we can discuss thanks tom i don't want to put you on the spot but i don't know if um Kanika, if you have any thoughts on um creating some measurable objectives for sure. I think just like to begin with, since we'll be either way publishing some of the public KPIs um, end of this month for the for the phase five project in particular, I think there is a possibility to um, do some brainstorming probably after the initial scope of the work and the TOR is kind of finalized to come up with the initial metrics for success of the project. It could be very few to track, but it could probably help the forum uh, in, a, in a futuristic direction, basically. So that's definitely something uh, we can work on to, to add like some level of key objectives um, similar to the KPIs that we've selected probably, or, and just probably fewer because this is a voluntary group um, as well. Great, thanks, Kanika. Um... Yeah, I, I, did anyone else have any comments on, on what has been discussed so far? Or um, we can maybe move um, down the document um, if there were some additional things, Nick, you were saying further down that we wanted to pick up on. Yeah, yeah, that, okay, that sounds good. Um, and, and so, yeah, so therefore, um, if we were all kind of agreed on that, it might be worth us considering it within the document as, as you kind of... Um, mentioned those comments further up. Um, my suggestion there is we just sharpen it a little bit to be to, to be clear that the forum provides an inclusive uh, space for organizations to come uh, across the sector to collaborate. Um, that that type of things, if that's the objective of the forum. And then the members of the forum are expected to be actively working towards engaging publishers, increasing the number of uh, organizations involved, et cetera, identifying new use cases. So it's, it's really putting the onus on those that are attending this forum to to, to do the stuff, report back on the stuff. And hopefully, you know, I think when Adam previously has offered to provide marketing support to various initiatives that are happening within, sorry, various things are happening within the initiative. Um, that's the kind of thing that would really make it worth people turning up. You know, if someone feels that they can turn up and, um, you, you know, share that they're working on a particular, you know, opening up a use case or whatever it is, 
um, and that Sport England will actually then go and, and, and amplify that. Or, you know, we have other um, other resources on the call. People might be keen to amplify those messages and this call becomes the way that that happens. Um, so if that's the case, then we're happy with that kind of framing then. And then the, the, the last bit was just around communication. So the idea that there's some loose collaboration between this and the other forums, I think it, for me that the idea that we're collaborating and supporting other committees and groups doesn't again really land doesn't mean anything. Um, you know who are who is specifically doing that collaboration? You know what what specifically is happening between those groups? Who is responsible for making that happen? Um, are we expected to turn up on the other calls? Um, you know are we expected to have communication between the the groups that's formalised and and trackable and we you know we know when it's working or not working because if the summary notes haven't been sent then they haven't been sent you know um so kind of really getting to the nub of what is it we're saying is, is going to happen here so my suggestion only suggestion is that a summary of these calls is 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 written up and sent in you know in, or made available in the other forums however that makes sense um and so that it, therefore it would be i not to put you on the spot here tim the the, the the chair role but you know potentially the chair's role to you know to write that up to share that and to make sure that that is disseminated to the relevant places um so that really crystallizes what that interaction between the forums looks like um in without um necessarily putting a, the burden on the others because it sounds like the people in the forum are going to be doing the stuff so maybe the reporting element should be um then therefore handled by the chair but i don't know what you you guys all think about that yeah no i, th I think i think we definitely need to you know firm up the processes and, that, and this is part, partly what this is about but also will obviously need to be things that are discussed with the other groups and and those other groups have input on it as well um but yeah i think there's a very much a feeling that at the moment the, the three different groups are kind of operating separately from each other and, and it would be good to have a bit more interaction between the, the three um so that uh the things that are going on in each one have some influence on, on each other and, and where the conversations that can you know support one of the other groups or the work of one of the other groups um you know if there's that those mechanisms for sharing information between them and, and reporting between them then then that you know that can be that can you know re really help support that um i just to go back it sounds like um in terms of the objectives then everyone's broadly happy with them it just needs a bit more clarity about the roles and responsibilities for for who is who is doing them is that fair can i just ask or raise just a couple of things if that's all right yeah of course go for it chris we're just on the page run now so members of the forum expect to be actively working on da, da, da. just the third point it's just, just more for clarification so identifying and supporting new use cases that demonstrate the value and impact of oa when we say use cases then are we is this use cases in terms of say discovery and social prescribing or disability or is it just the help and support that we can provide people that just actually need a bit of help implementing open active or adopting um open active um so the reason i kind of bring that up is like I'll, i've had conversations across the whole community some on the call here um, and others that aren't obviously i've spoken to people that have just a few problems of trying to get like their affiliated clubs to add their data or add their sub activities rather sorry onto um the activity finder there's not a data issue it's just uh, they're trying to get across the value and benefit of actually putting that information onto an activity finder. Does that potentially, you know, fall under that third point there, or is it just do we do we need another point around supporting those who need that extra help in helping their affiliated clubs? I know it's a very specific example, but the affiliated clubs in uh, promoting their data more on activity finder to make it more, you know. Um, available for people to find uh, across the uh, the ecosystem. So I'm just curious, is that what that third point re refers to, or is the another point need to be put on there? Because what I'd like to see this 
forum or what space or whatever what we want to call it is to encourage more and more people to come along to it but from you know like you've got the list further down you know around active partnerships and ngbs and operators and providers etc cetera, etc cetera, to be able to come along and to not i don't want it to be like you know raising issues all the time or anything and be moaning about it but you know to say look i need some help in this area but it's not a data area we have obviously w3c calls a technical call for that um fortnightly this i feel and you know again correct me if i'm wrong or if anyone doesn't feel this way but this is a more a non-technical um forum where we can you know um as tom said you know we can talk about the work that's going on and who's been discussing things with who who can help here who can do this but if we want to bring more and more new people along to this forum i think that's the route potentially we have to go down is to highlight it that look, it's not don't come along with any data issues or issues that you have with the standards you know you have other calls for that but this is more for those particular things around look i'm trying to get people to uh, understand the value and benefit of open active can you help so that was just a, my sort of comments there. I don't know if anyone has any uh, comments on that. I can, um, so so uh, Chris, I think that's 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 really helpful um, thoughts there. I think for me, that's, that's the, the distinction between this call being a place where people who are kind of doing engagement versus the people who are being engaged with and have the, the challenges and and so, and, and kind of collaborating. So you could you could view what you've just said there in two ways. Either the ODI has a work stream and you're engaging with some people that have got some issues. So you're on this call representing that work stream and you're now bringing that problem to this group, which is great. Can we help? You know, what can we help you with? You know, what is the tools that you need, et cetera, to go back to that audience um, and, and help them to engage better or overcome their barriers. And so that's the first way we could think about this. Um, and the second way of thinking about this, depending on the size of the organizations you're talking to and you know their interest in open active more generally is they could come along to this forum and maybe it's their audience that needs, you know, and, and they could become the more engaged party and, and directly interface with this group and, and learn about what they need to be doing differently or bring those issues to, to us. Um, and so in, in that way, it's kind of discerning really in this group when we talk to people, do we think that they're the type of organization that could be in this group and, and literally figuring out how engagement works between us? Or are they one of those organizations that are better managed by one of the people on this call and, you know, and, and you know, the handholding that needs to happen there? Because this call, I don't know if this call scales if we have 30, 40 people on it who all come and go, there's a problem here, there's a problem there, I don't understand this, don't understand that. For me, that is what engagement is. The, the, the actual work of engagement is taking from someone from, I don't understand why I should do this to, I do understand why I should do this. And um, and I don't understand how I should do this to, I do understand how I should do this. And so that's the, the work of engagement. But I don't think this call is to do that work, to take people from zero to one in that respect. I think it's about coordinating people who are doing that. So it sounds like you're doing engagement work there, um, you know, maybe accidentally. And actually, you may need some help in articulating the benefits or sharing benefits with those organizations you're talking to so that they can understand um, how to over overcome those barriers. Um, or maybe it's that you need to share back some of those challenges that you've, you've got because you're not, um, you know, you, you haven't encountered those yet. Other people on the call have, so we can help you with um, what it is that you can help those organizations with. Um, I guess, does that framing make sense to everyone? I suppose that's the key thing I'm interested in is the framing rather than the specifics. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, Nick. I think um, there's the, the, the scale of, of what we're trying to do um, using these calls to kind of answer queries in from individual organize or, or specific organizations would, um, I guess, distract where I think the role of this call is so that the people on it who are doing heavy engagement work for whatever reason um, are able to be as prepared as possible to do that engagement work and to share things like how, why, what about open active. Um, and so, yeah, individually, I, I, I have multiple conversations a week with individual um, organizations that are use, utilizing open active or individual providers and um, if all of those questions came into this forum it would be pretty hard to manage um, it without, without it being like a, a 
Q&A session for specific issues. Yeah, no, I get all that. That, that will make sense. I think it's just um, where, you know, I'm just having the, the conversations, as I said, across the community, just for, you know, try and understand uh, people's um, journey and uh, process so far with Open Active. And yes, you're uncovering a few things that are coming up from that where they haven't, because they haven't had any engagement for however long, um, they're, you know, unsure of where they could actually raise it to and who they can actually speak to about it because, Sometimes I said it's not just a data issue, it's just, you know, a simple person issue um, of trying to get, you know, value and benefit across. It's not, you know, understanding where they can go to. But no, I, I wasn't sort of suggesting let's have like, you know, everyone to come across. Oh, listen, I spoke to 50 people this week. They've all got an issue. They're all coming now, um, you know, to the next call. It's, you know, I, I completely understand that's not going to work. But, you know, could it be a case of if someone's got a potential issue, like a raised, you know, about an, an NGB that's just trying to encourage all of their affiliated clubs we get the ngb to come along speak about what the potential issues are we you know as a group either take it away or we can give some advice on the call um i think you know and then it just at least it maybe instills some more confidence within the community that okay you know what things are being looked at things are being discussed because we, we all know a lot of this is word of mouth um and if they do hear oh you know what it's really really helpful or like you said we funnel it all into one thing but then who then takes that responsibility on what's within the scope of the actual role, who's going to bring that um, to the table. So I don't know if that then needs uh, potential identifying as well, but that's it. Look, this is, this is what we're obviously here for to, to you know, put all these ideas forward and to come up with potential um, solutions for that. So I, I'm for either one. It's just that, you know, I want to be able to help as much as I can to help people implement and adopt uh, open active. I'd like, we all are. So. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chris. Oh, sorry, go on, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, it, it's a very important point where um, even yourself um, doesn't have an obvious answer to some of these questions, like the value of Open Active, what they need to do to adopt it is still a little bit kind of um, unclear. I, I mean, I, sometimes people ask me and it's like in the, in, in the moment is not a straightforward kind of place to point to or a um thing that they can easily communicate to whatever audience it is and, and that that that's an insight that definitely can be discussed in this call and so you know everyone knows okay here's a resource that we can share as what what is like there's a simple thing if the value isn't clear about what open active is then like that needs addressing as as a key point um but yeah they're they're the things that will enable everyone here to get better at engagement, um, to, get, to empower other people to get better engagement. Um, and yeah, having that kind of getting, getting, having the conversations on the ground, provide the insights that can be discussed and then um, a solution can be kind of shared for where, where there's missteps in the engagement. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I, th I think while it might not be practical to have every individual organization joining i think there's definitely a place where there's um sort of re repeated themes or repeated issues that are coming up to to highlight that in these in these calls um with with examples so that um and and like you say tom if there's then a gap in the resources or that we have or as a community or a gap in in knowledge or whatever then we can we can look to address that uh, jack you've got your hand up yeah, I actually think uh, you and uh, Tom have said quite a lot of what I was going to say, but I think the phrase that's rattling around in my head is that engagement is bilateral most of the time, but making the engagement successful requires this kind of multilateral coordination. And I think maybe what we need in this TOR is just to really highlight the fact that this is somewhere where people can come to with problems. I mean, people who are doing engagement can come to with problems and we figure out what's missing and what needs to happen either technically in the design of the program or just getting the right people talking to each other. Yeah, I'm just adding on to that. I think um, this element of like what's defined as someone who does engagement um, opposed to the people that need engaging with. And I think people that do engagement NGBs, active partnerships, whoever, they definitely should have a place to go on, on this call. And that's like people that are actually doing the work to engage on a kind of 
individual provider level. But yeah, I think there's that's where if if it goes, I guess as that scales, that that might become a new problem where there's lots of different people. But I, I think for now, um, we've got the attendance levels in in control. But it's more just a where does the line get drawn? My perspective is it's got to be people that are doing engagement as part of their work, not people that need engaging with. I think that's really helpful, Tom. I think I think and I agree with what everything everyone's just said there. I think there's if you imagine um, someone starts off as I don't know anything about open active, they move through a continuum. So they, they move through to I get it. I'm doing it. And then they move to I'm helping other people to do it. For me, that's a successful engagement. It results in someone who not only gets it, but they get it enough that they can share. And at that point, they should come to this forum because that shows that someone on this forum has helped take them on that journey one-to-one -to, -one to get them to the point where they understand everything. They're not going to come to this forum and ask all the questions that everyone already knows the answer to here because that's a one-to-one -one point to um, Jack's um, bilateral uh, comment. But when they get to the point where they, you know, that NGB that's already doing the work, you know, that they're already trying to engage and they're, they're coming up with challenges there and they're fully bought in themselves and they get it, um, then then there may be an opportunity to, to, to bring them here. And um, that might be the best place to, to do that. But I, I, I almost think I'm just kind of guarding against the the messaging that is just come to this forum and all your problems will be solved kind of off the off the cuff and just turn up. Because I think, because we have drop-in forums like that in other places, and I don't know if this forum should be that type of drop-in session. I, I almost wonder whether we should be agendering things. So let's say, for example, that Chris has encountered a specific issue with three organizations he's spoken to. He might, as a person who is doing engagement, he might, as a, a, um, a person doing engagement, put it as an agenda item on the school. He might invite two or three of those to the call to share examples of the kind of problems that they're coming across, right? As that particular, for that agenda item within the agenda, very clearly they're turning up for that agenda item. That's the expectation. So we then work through that challenge together. And it's obviously because Chris is raising it, he'll be raising it because he would have answered all the obvious questions, right? And so these are the questions that are kind of people are getting stuck on uh, or whatever it is. And so then we've, we have a really good discussion about that with the people there. Um, and, and hopefully help um, you know Chris and and those organisations to to you know to move forward on those points. Um, but then there's no expectation that those three people will turn up next week, right? Because they've just turned up for that one agenda point. That was very well organised. Everyone knew that was coming. So if they were interested, it was a you know notification well in advance. They could consider it. They could pr prepare or come come to that particular session if they were interested in it. Um, and so really kind of guarding against this idea that we've just got this forum, just turn up to it if you've got any issues at all with Open Active and it will just solve everything. Because I think that's where we get into a kind of a bit of a mess um, and, and really trying to structure it around who are the people that are doing engagement, you know, what, and even, you know, to the point of, you know, Chris, I totally appreciate you've gone out there fairly cold, really, you know, without much Open Active experience and just talk to people and, you know, they've thrown things up at you, but that's a really good point, right? You it might be that we need to kind of formalize a, almost a syllabus or a criteria for who is doing engagement. Like, do, have they covered this basic level of stuff? Have, has someone from this, this group gone through the basics so that they fully understand it before that they're, they're counted as kind of doing engagement to the extent that we, we would want them to? Um, so it's, it's almost clear which side of that line, as Tom was talking about, that they, they, they sit on. Are, they, are we engaging with them still? Do they understand the full syllabus? Um, or, you know, are they now doing engagement? Is it uh, something more than that? Um, does that kind of structuring make, make sense to people? Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense, Nick. And I think that's, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I think that that's maybe what Chris was kind of had in mind that we, like you say, have that kind of agen agendas where people feed into them and we have them in advance. So, and, and, like you say people not necessarily having to come every single week but where we have an agenda for a meeting which is around a particular theme or a particular issue that um we can invite specific organizations that have experienced that and can give examples and um sort of real life experience to to bring that to life and then as a as a group we can then work through that issue and support it and then as a output see if there's any 
new resources or if there's adaptions to current resources that we have that, that need tweaking to make them more fit for purpose. Um, um, I think I think that would give real real value to this this group and I think that sounds like a really good way forward. Um, uh, just looking at time, I don't know if anyone wants to have a quick last word at Kanika, I look like you're about to jump in. Um, yes, I think just a very quick one. I really liked Jack's point around the um, multilateral engagement because I think one of the major points that we're also trying to reach like and impact with open active is ensuring that we actually create an inviting space and an enabling ecosystem for everyone to engage. And that's why I feel that that as a vision statement for this group, I think just even being able to create that uh, enabling ecosystem would be a success. And uh, just like a segue would be that, I mean, I've uh, I've been in the project for three months now, I guess. And I've seen Harvard, for example, brilliantly engage in so many uh, like webinars and conferences about the value of open active. And I know that he has a, a section today, but probably like him also talking about like what he does, how does he, he knows the united front that he has to present for open active uh, in general, right? And probably we all have something to learn and probably like even uh, with our comms team starting to do some uh, engagement around what open active is on the website, et cetera, it will really pick things up. So yeah, I'm really excited to where things will head, I think in coming months. Uh, over to you, Tim. Great, thanks, Kanika. Um, Tim, can I just prompt, uh, I know Nish has been quiet there, but do you mind if I just quickly, uh... I'm yeah, sorry, Nish, if, quick, if it's quick, very quick, <laughs> very quick. Um, Nish, do you think there's any merit in in? I mean, basically, internally, I mean, we've got very good at engagement to the point where we've got, you know, we're able to train up people to do that. Um, I was a good question for Nish, I suppose. Do you think there's any merit in some type of tra training or syllabus for people who are engaging to make sure that folks that are doing it on the ground have uh, all the knowledge that they they need to do that? As uh, as Kanika was saying just there. Um, you know, make sure that, that everyone's uh, fully equipped um, with, with learnings that they need. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, when you put it like that, how can I say no? Um, I mean, having, having, yeah, having more people able to answer more questions and talking to more people will always be good. Um, so definitely, I, I don't think it, it's that difficult either. Um, I don't think it takes that long to, to get someone up to speed. Um, yeah, and I totally agree with the point that if, if this group's about enabling those that are doing the engagement to do more, do better, I do think that's the best way forward. Cool, thank you. That's maybe um, a gap in resources that we're talking about that we could, <laughs> I know we've got the um, the e-learning modules on the website, so maybe we could um, add, a, add a module or two, which is more specifically around uh, Ups, upskilling people in terms of engagement and advocacy so that sounds like a, a positive okay i think i'm going to move on if that's okay with everyone um to uh howard uh we're gonna unfortunately skip the sport england update but hope hope to get adam at a future meeting to to give an update from sport england um but yeah just to move on howard who wanted to quickly give a update on the the marketplace or the new oh um sorry tim just just as um uh you before you move on i just wanted to make the point that jack made about the odi's influence by this i i don't think you'll resolve it now because i think it's a conversation to take away but i think it'd be good for you to take away the comment that jack made and maybe discuss it between you about the odi being influenced by this forum because i think what jack suggested and i agree with other people in this forum will probably also agree with directly just contravenes what's in the current terms of reference so maybe that's the thing to take away with you guys to talk about sure yeah we will take that as an action point i think maybe maybe it's even just a, a case of clearing up the language in the, in the in the terms of reference that what was intended by the um what was in the terms of reference isn't necessarily how the how it comes across so yeah we'll, i'll take that away and, and revisit it with um with others at the ODI and Sport England as well. Thanks, Nick. Um, over to you, Howard. Excellent. Uh, but before we move on, sorry, I just want to capture Nish's comment for the, for the video, if necessary. So um, we, in response to what we've just been talking about as 
e-learning is necessarily the right answer here. It's not by itself. It needs to be a case of watch one, try one, do one, which I quite like. And I think you know it makes sense. Um, so and, and you know, Kenny has said there that I've been doing all this engagement, and I, I'm really conscious from the last one that I just did, which was for uh, some of the really small system provide activity providers, uh, grassroots kind of stuff, just what a basic level of digital kind of skills, you know, so we really need to break it down. We need um, some of our learning has to go right back to real basics, really basics. Right? Why bother sharing information between organizations, those kind of things, you know, uh, try to come up with some examples. But we'll move on because we want to talk about the marketplace. So um, I'm going to try and share my screen which is, I can share screen while the other participant is partic uh, sharing. Can you let, let go, Tim, for a moment? Sure. Uh, uh, stop share. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can see now um, a screenshot from the Open Active Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes. So this is the the old screen. Uh, it's an area on the website where you can find people who do different stuff in relation to Open Active. And I had an outstanding task um, that I kind of inherited after Tim Hill left. Uh, to update this and we had after a piece of work so a slightly more interactive version slightly clearer perhaps uh in that it wasn't a table that you could see everything on the screen at one time so i'm going to try and share that now one second Uh, you can see this is the same, effectively the same web page, but it now has a different search facility. And you can filter by publishers, booking, etc. And underneath is a little box for each one with these green ticks. So just to explain, I this code had been developed and picked up, and we've effectively just uploaded into the, the relevant space on the website. Um, now, Nish has had a sort of first, I think the first to kind of uh, take a look at it and come back with some feedback. So th there are some questions around, um, what's the process for making sure you get a tick? What's the process for making sure you get listed on this page? Uh, so that's that's an area. Is it engagement? It, it's a tool, I think, for, you know, to, um, for, some of these organizations to engage with potential users. Um, so it's certainly worth exploring, but I, I only after it went up and in response to Nish's uh, kind of comments did I, where this had come from, how the code had been developed and what the kind of processes were. So I'm still um, unearthing some documents around that. For example, I did find this, um, which is a form and I don't know if, if this was ever shared or if anyone ever used this, but this is where you could perhaps um, answer some of the questions to populate what you see on screen. Uh, so unless anyone who's been here a bit longer can um, knows more, that's that's what I know about it so far. And that's the marketplace. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, as, as far as I can recall, it, it was mainly led by Tim Hill, but... Um... Yeah, as far as I can recall, the, the process was what you've um, just suggested. It was reaching out to each of these organizations and they provided information. But um, yeah, whether it is accurate or up to date is, is another question. And what the process should be for ensuring that it is accurate up to date is, a, is another question. Oh, I need to add an update because we have sports, I think, that uh, need to be added here. For... Yeah, and I guess that's a, another question as well as how new organisations that implement um, Open Active uh, request to request to be included on this as well. But yeah, f f the form seems like a, a sensible way to go. 
but whether there needs to be some kind of peer peer review system or something to to make sure that everything is accurate i don't know yeah well, that's right we don't want to mislead potential users um so that's right we don't we don't want to people overselling their capabilities or so that's to be explored um, and uh, also, Howard, it might be worth thinking about when we get this new status page up, which includes proper validation, it might be that there's an overlap between the validation that they're passing clearly in the open, you know, with the test suite results, et cetera, all there, and whether they get a tick in here. So there's like, a, there's not a mismatch between they're on the status page and they're not here or they're here and not on the status page. It should be the same. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, they should be aligned. So this is the current state page, which was updated um a month or so ago so this this still needs a little bit of work definitely we're um it's a, a green tick indicates that that endpoint is returning something um it's it doesn't say that it's and we're exploring what that means in the w3c calls at the moment uh so there is there's a lot to do there but also this list is based on um the the data catalog, uh, and I'm not sure that that's being kept up to date. For example, if I scroll right down to the bottom, we have some, um, and these look very much like feeds, um, um, or ones that are perhaps now no longer running. So, sorry, Howard, I fear we're veering off into um, yeah, sorry, three C territory. <laughs> Right, yeah, I'll start and we've and uh, we're running short on time as well. So, um, I think if that's it's okay, I'll just quickly move on to uh, to any other business. Just if there was anything anyone wanted to raise in the last couple of minutes before we finish. No, I think I was productive, and I think we we're going in the right direction. So, good work, everyone, for pulling it together. Cool. Thanks, Tim. And thanks. Thanks for adding all the things to the TOR and all the comments by everyone as well. I think once it's finalized, I'll be happy to support with any um, very few KPI creation for the group. Thanks, Kanika. And Nick, I think were you going to say something? Oh yeah, just um, just a question. What's the next steps with the, the TOR now? Um, obviously, we've, we've got some comments from this call and well, comments before the call, comments on the call. Um, what's the next? Is it going to be updated and then reshared with the group? Good, um, good question. Yeah, I think I'll leave it open for a comment. I think for another week or so because it's only been um, out for about a week or so. So just give a bit more time, hopefully to get some more input from a few other people and a few other different organisations. Um, and then yeah, based on that, we'll then um, share a revised um, revised edition. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to sign that off and um, yeah, move, move it forward. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, in that case, I think I'll bring the meeting to a close. Just say thank you very much everyone for joining um, and hope to see you all again in a couple of weeks time. Thank you. Have a